But I also realized then how the mainstream media is inhibited, how there really are no-go areas. And sometimes it's difficult to say why. It's just convention. It's always been that way. Welcome to News Peaks. My name's Rachel, this is Ruby, and today we're talking with investigative journalist Martin Veltz. Why are you a journalist? I started out a lawyer, and in this whole process I realised that actually I could deliver far more justice for far less as a journalist than I could ever as a lawyer. Why do you think that is? First of all, the, the rich and famous, especially when they uh, tend to abuse their power, and they generally feel that they move in a social circle that will protect them. So. Uh, they are comfortable with mainstream media and so on, but when you suddenly have a medium like ours, we name yeah. and shame, that's yes. one of the things, they're generally quite astounded, it has a huge impact. And obviously if you can also get some change to the system, which is much rarer, much more difficult yeah. to achieve, and quite often the victims of abuse, they need a voice, they, they need to be heard. So you become the voice for the small man, you amplify their voice, you tell their story and that becomes a vindication. We've developed certain themes, so lawyers, banks, insurance companies. I'm not critical of the idea of a bank. Banks deliver a good service, but they, in our society over the times, they've established themselves as untouchable religions, really, and you've got to sort of break down that image and then deal with, deal with the reality, which we do, and we're not really popular for that. <laughs> no, uh, so we don't get any advertising from banks or insurance companies. But, but we take up the cause of those and, we, we, and s some of our bigger court cases that we've been involved in have involved major South African banks. Yeah, absolutely. Is that like First Rand Bank in yeah. 2007? Yeah. You represented yourself in that case, yeah. didn't you? Most law firms in South Africa will in fact not represent you against a major bank. I know the facts better than anybody else. I mean, I'm the, the journalist who researched the story, so I know what it's about, so I can present the documents and so on, which is what I do. So I really run those cases on the facts, on the merits of the facts in the public interest, which is the standard journalist defence. And you demonstrate that by not taking advertising from those particular sources? Well, they don't come to us with advertising. <laughs> they, have, they have no intention of supporting our cause, <laughs> which I can entirely understand. So, so yeah. runs itself mostly through... Um, Subscriptions and, and purchases. I mean, we are on sale in many 900 different outlets across the country. But once people are hooked, they stay, which is a great thing. Um, yeah, and, and as I say, it's, it's a publication with a personality. We don't promote a particular ideology. So people with different political views, it's fine. South Africa so much is absurd and outrageous that it's not fiction. We stopped the idea of satire very early on. We just said the reality was outrageous enough. Without, we didn't have to caricature it. It's a caricature in itself. When I worked for mainstream media, all the stories are, are sanitized in a way. Language, structure, you filter out the, the more outrageous details. You know, let's stick to the earnest sort of solid stuff that won't offend the middle class. <laughs> well, well, we're not worried about offending the middle class. But I also realized then how the mainstream media is inhibited, how there really are no-go areas. And sometimes it's difficult to say why. It's just convention, it's always been that way. You know, the only rule was you did not attack the mining industry and you did not promote the unions. You became inventive. You found ways of getting around these things and yeah. of conveying a message between the lines and all those techniques developed. And I also realized then that everybody was so focused on the political that they were not actually realizing what was going on in terms of corporate power. What was the role played by big businesses? For instance, South Africa's nuclear program. We had a nuclear bomb program going, but it had huge implications for the mining industry, for industry, and huge sectors of what you, we would have perceived to be liberal, Anglo-centric business was deeply committed to playing a role in that whole process. And that's the sort of stuff that I started doing. And I started saying, if I can't criticize government politicians in terms of their ideology, whatever, I can start looking at their personal morals. Journalists often are on the side of the fanatical protection of copyright, which is absurd because the duty of artists 
and, and journalists is to spread the information as much as, as possible.